Hello, Donna Cato here. Welcome to my channel. Now, this tutorial, part of the Black and White series, is going to be on making the wavy cane. So here's a wavy cane here, and here's a wavy cane here, and let me find more wavy canes. Oh, another wavy cane, and this is a wavy cane too. So I think you can see that they don't, the waves are not always the same. And certainly my waves are not always the same. So we're going to make the basic wavy cane first, and then we're gonna talk about some variations to the wavy cane. This is something that I, obviously you guys can see, I use it quite a bit. So we're gonna start with black and white clay. And, I have taken this slab measuring two and a half. I have two slabs measuring two and a half inches by three inches. And in terms of thickness, they are two thicknesses of the thickest setting of my pasta machine. I have an atlas that starts at zero. So I've got these two. I'm gonna set one of them aside. Now, I meant to do this, sorry. Let me quickly roll the white clay through the pasta machine. Condition it just a little bit. It is quite soft. So there was no need to add any conditioning far. Now, these were actually scrap clay, and I added the black out to them. And so, in terms of softness, they seem to be well, pretty close. Pretty close. All right, so this has been rolled through setting number two on my atlas. And if I were to use this, I would have stripes that are rather thick along these lines in terms of thickness. Now when you have something like this, I believe this was probably a little thinner. Certainly I think this was thinner. I'm not really sure. Anyway, so you have the choice. Do you want bold stripes or do you want very fine ones? So I'm going to go uh, sort of mid-ground. So I'm going to re-roll my sheet through, let's say, setting number four. So it's not the thinnest and it's certainly not the thickest it could be. Now I'm going to put this on one side and trim it away. I really like this cane obviously and I will tell you that I have taught this cane many times and you know what? I have taught it at least three different ways. Our friend Beth from Minnesota knows all of them. If you're out there, Beth, hello. Hello. The first method was... <laughs> was actually the hardest. And then each method got a little bit easier as I figured out ways to make the process just a tad easier for you. All right, so I've rolled this black clay through setting number six. And this is one of the first kind of shortcuts, the first deviation from the original. Maybe the second. Anyway, I kept changing the way I taught it as I discovered slightly simpler ways, more streamlined ways of making the cane. So now from the side, this is what we have. We have our thick base, we have our white stripe, and then we have a thinner sheet of black on top. Now at this point, we're gonna start impressing these channels into this sheet. So let's say we put one there, and we put one there, 
and I don't try to make them very regular, so the spacing um, is as irregular as I can make it. But ironically, sometimes when I'm trying to make things irregular, I end up making them kind of regular. Okay, so you're going to push in, and it's good if the clay is a little on the soft side because then it's a little bit easier to create these channels. Now, since I pushed my little brass rod into this um, slab of clay, it creates kind of these corners, these sharper areas on both sides of the channel, so I'm going to try to smooth them out just by rolling like so. Like so. And let me cut a piece on this, off the side and show you what we have so far. So that's basically what I've done. All right. So let me lift this up. It's really good and stuck to my work surface, which was very beneficial when I was doing it. But here, this is what we have. So the act of squishing actually, of course, made this piece longer than the three inches. So let's just compress it back just a tad. Okay. So they are now the same. Now the next, what we're going to do here is we're going to make the opposite of this in terms of the channels. And what that will do is it will make it easier to fill the channels because this piece should fit into the first. So to determine where, you're going to take everywhere where there's a rise, like here, it's going up. And you're going to indicate that like that, because that's where you're going to squish down into this one. And of course, at the end, you're going to squish like that. This is the next rise. So let's just indicate that. This is the next one. And everywhere you see or feel that there is a rise in this, you are going to make indicate where that is so you can make a depression in the other sheet. And here on the end is a rise, so I'm going to go down. All right, so now I'll get this out of the way and let's start working on making the depressions in the black slab. And this saves a lot of time because I think like version 3 had putting a sheet of black and then filling all the spaces in with half, um, half rounds and all that stuff. And you know what? That worked. But I will tell you it was more work than this. Okay, so let's see. All right, so let me take this up. And now let's fit them together. Like so. Now, I can tell here, I've got those corners. So what I'm gonna do is remember when I did this with the other one, I softened them like this. 
and then I should have a much smoother wave, less chopped up, less angular, because you know any any place you have a corner in this sheet, it's going to create that same corner in that one. So this would be the time to make sure that you don't have that. Is it critical? Probably not. Probably not. I mean, is it going to ruin your cane if you don't do it? I don't think so. But um, since I see it, I will address it. Okay, so to make it fit, you even might want to hold it like this. And, and then in some parts, you may want to stretch out. And in other parts, you may see... Here, right here, I'm going to stretch this a bit and make it fit. Then I'm going to stretch this one out a bit and maybe open this up so that I can insert the other piece. Now let's make sure that the other side isn't <laughs> the other side doesn't look as uh, it looks like I pushed a little bit harder on the right than the left. But this is, will probably be cut away here. So I'll open that and insert this one. Like so. So now I've got the two pieces together. Okay. And, and they're pretty good, you know. It's a pretty good... And by that, I mean this side is not terribly lumpy. This side is not terribly lumpy. The wave is running straight through the middle of these two slabs. Now, at this point, I do want to even out the sides because if you can see, see how it's not perfectly straight and flat. It's going in and up and in and out like so. So I'm going to trim some away. But here is a place where you can make decisions about, oh, how close together you want your waves to. I tend to like the waves a little close together. Um, I don't spread them out wide because if you spread them out wide, you get waves, but they're far apart. So I want mine closer together. So that's another thing that I'm doing here is actually, and I'll show you on this slice, cutting away this excess like this so that when they're together they will be closer all right and if I actually cut more away like this then I can make them even closer together like so all right, so let's get going. Now, you want to make sure that the slab is really stuck to your work surface because you're going to take your blade and you round it slightly like this. Just slightly like that, if you can see. It's easier than cutting flat if you go like that. And just start shaving the excess away. This is so much easier than methods one, two, and three. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time and a little bit of thought to arrive at a different solution. It also, for me, means that I have to be open to the the possibility that there's another way you know I, I think all of us have a tendency maybe to fall into these repeating channels of behavior and, and it, it 
it extends to clay. It's like, oh, I did it this way, and I've always done it this way, and so I will always do it this way, but you know what? Maybe there's an easier way. But you never find it that way if you're always quite convinced that the way you work is the way it's supposed to be. And this cane is a perfect example of that. Seriously, you... If you ever meet Beth from Minnesota, she will tell you because she knows. She learned one, two, three, and four. So you can see I'm slicing quite a bit of the clay away. Now I don't know what that is, but I don't like it. Oh. Oh, it's a little hard bit. I don't think it's going to make any difference, but it's much better for it not to be there. Okay, so this is what it looks from the side. And you can see that I can cut quite a bit more away, but this is a little deceiving. This is what it looks like at the edge. But inside there, it could be closer to the surface. It could be. So I just have to keep slicing away very carefully until I reach the thickness that I want. Now, I have to do the other side as well. But the other side is much, much flatter because this half on the left is the original where I was pushing down. So of course this is going to be flatter. This is the one that I forced into the spaces. All right, so I'm gonna keep cutting. I don't think you wanna watch me cut the whole thing. And then I will be back. All right, so I, uh, I know I said I would be back when I was finished, but I'm back before. Because as I was cutting, I ran into these uh, spaces, these little vacuums, air little, little air pockets. And that will happen because um, when I put this together, of course, it wasn't absolutely perfect. It wasn't. And could I have made it more perfect? Maybe. Maybe. Is this a big deal? No. I don't think so, because I'm going to keep cutting. So if you run into these little air pockets like this, well, if you run into an air pocket like that and you're just about through cutting, then what you're going to do is fill it. You're going to fill it with clay. Okay, here, I'm just going to take a little, little bit of scrap here. And you would just fill it in like that. Try to fill the space up and continue cutting. First, you're going to try to push any air out. See, there's air. Try to push it out. Somewhere it will escape. If it doesn't want to escape, then you're going to take maybe a little acupuncture needle and pierce it and then let it go like that. So now, boink. Now, fill it up. So, uh... Don't worry about that. It, I have to say it's happened to me probably every single time. Okay, so you're going to do that and then you're going to continue your slicing like that. Let's see, never know it was even there. There's a hole there. Okay, so I'll just take this little scrappy piece, push it in there, maybe fold it over because it appears to be just a little bit larger, like that. Then take my blade and cut the excess away. So none of this is really, this is not freak out time. Okay, so now I will continue cutting because I want to cut quite a bit more away. But I wanted you to see that. I'm still cutting, but I wanted to show you something. See where this white is here? Looks like I have plenty of room to cut, doesn't it? Well, look what I ran into in here. A little bit of white. So 
it appears when I look at the side that I have plenty of space, but I'm really in here closer than I thought. So I just wanted to show you that. So, of course, as you get to, to this point and closer, you shave away less and less and less and less so that you don't run into that. Now, I'm going to fill that in. Because it also seems to be depressed. It's like I sliced the black clay that wasn't really stuck to the white. But I wanted you to see how close it was. So when you slice, just make sure that you start literally shaving the clay, this black clay, away so you don't cut away too much of that white. All right, so I'm going to continue. So I've trimmed both sides. I did cut into the white here. I'm not too concerned about that. But now I have a choice. Do I want, um, as I make my slab, do I want a wavy cane with a lot of waves or just a few? Because you see, if I cut like this and I start slabbing it, it's going to have fewer waves in the cane. And I think I want more, so I'm just going to show you how that's done. Because what we have to do now is we have to compress this. And that's easier than you think it might be. It just lay it down and start squeezing in like this and your stripes will, your waves will start to have kind of a strange appearance sometimes they get very strange looking but um don't be concerned because it's temporary it's just a temporary thing but you can see because i am forcing those stretched out waves to compress every now and then try to roll it flat with your acrylic rod so you don't end up with these very very deep places in the strip so I'm just making it a long strip like so Okay, now let me cut off the ends. Actually, I think I'll go a little further, make this a little longer. Just a touch. And this is the lumpy side. get rid of most of the lumps. All right, so let me take a cut off the end. And you can see what we have. All right, now that looks kind of strange. I've made them and they do have this strange appearance like that, but I'm not concerned. Okay. So here we go with the ruler. Let's cut this in half and we're going to put the two halves together. And 
and it is approximately four and a half, which gives me two and a quarter. Now putting it back together, I think I'll do this. And, uh, is that two? If you do it this way, it tends to start looking very regular where the points meet. So for me, I don't want them to meet. So maybe flipping it over. Ah, let's try that. I make them and they always come out differently. Okay, I'm going to cut it in half again. Now you're probably thinking, wow, how does that become a wavy, a nice wave? And so I'm going to show you. Now I'm going to take a slice off. First I'm going to take that one and put it in my scrap pile. And this is probably, oh, I don't know, maybe between two and three millimeters. So now I'm going to take it, I'm going to roll it through the pasta machine, and we're going to start stretching these out. So I'm going to start at zero. Ta-da! Oops. Now I'm moving to one. Two. Here's three. Let's go to four. Four. Five. Go to six, and it's starting to have a more stretched out wavy look to it. Now, it's a little irregular. All of them that I make are different, but this has some irregularity there and some points. And I think the problem was when I put them together. Um, I think. I'm not sure. But I do like it. This is going to be perfectly usable because one of the problems I have with caning is that my canes tend to become sort of relentlessly regular and um, so I, I like this because it's not as regular as the canes that I ordinarily make. So let's go to seven. And it just keeps getting stretched out. So I have the feeling that this, this was something along these lines. Because you can see that there are thick parts uh, mixed in with the thin. And what is happening here is I've got the thick and the thin going on too. So I am going to take this and I'm going to reduce it further, make the pattern smaller, and then we will see if I'm right or wrong. All right, so I did reduce it. You can see it started out as four up and now it's four, 16 up. So I reduced it quite a bit. So let's take this. I did when I had eight, roll it through. And you know what? Clearly, I, I think I was right. I hope I was right. I might have been right. Okay. Ta-da. All right. So let's start rolling. And I'm going to go through three. And four. 
five, five, and seven, and it definitely looks more like this. So those these spots, these thick areas, these squared off thick areas actually turned into these nice thicker areas in the cane. So what's the lesson here? If you don't like it the way it is, just give it a try. Try reducing it. You know, I remember when I made the original one in the necklace, I remember thinking, how did I do that? <laughs> Because I couldn't quite, I, I could not analyze it and figure out how I did it. But I think I know now what happened here. And you know what? I like it. I really like this a lot. It's not the regular, uh, the regular one, but I really like it. Now, which leads us back to how you would make the really regular, the really regular one. So remember when we were at the point where you could cut it in half and put it together where it was like this? And I said, well, if you wanted fewer waves, you could cut it together and put it like this. Well, if I had done it this way and then reduced it and then uh, stacked it up and made it into um, a square cane or a rectangular cane, then I wouldn't have had those, uh, I would not have ended up with this. It would have been a much more fluid, longer uh, wave. So at that point, what I would recommend is that you cut it in half instead of squishing it down. Remember, I took it and I squished it down and I stretched it out and I cut it and I forced all those waves into a very small space. And when you do that, what will happen to you is you get pockets of the stripe of the white as you compress it together because they don't compress perfectly evenly and you saw that because the cane when I had put it together and cut the face it was all jagged like that wasn't it well that was because I had compressed so much of that clay into a much smaller space so if you want waves like more fluid waves, then cut it in half and put it together and make a cane that has fewer waves rather than this one that had lots of waves. Okay, so that's it. I believe I have explained everything. If not, then please let me know uh, in the comments. And once again, thank you for liking and subscribing and thank you for commenting I'm sorry I don't get to all the comments um, uh, uh, I'm sorry I will try to be better but what I want you to know is that I do read them I read them so that's it and here are just a few waves to show you that they are never the same for me okay so here's one wavy one, two, three, four, maybe five waves in this. And I like these little knobs in this one. Doink, doink. And basically what that is, is where there's an air pocket and the white stripe kind of gathers there and is forced into a little air pocket. And you get those nice little knobs. Now this one was a cane. I know it's kind of weird looking, huh? Well, I'll show you. Here's what it looks like stretched out. And this was a situation where I actually added a bunch of extra clay to the sheet. So I took a ball stylus and I, you know, ran, ran it through the black sheet and then I put a little rod of white in in certain places because I wanted to create this irregularity and that's what happened here. Looks a little odd here, but I really like it. I mean, I think this has a lot of potential, so I'll keep working on that. And I think that's it. Oh, this was not terribly successful. I do not like this very much. But what I was trying to do was create 
lines that had separations at certain places. And I'm going to work on this again because I think I can, I can get it. But I just did not hit the mark with this one. Okay, so that's it. Please subscribe and like if you've learned anything or if you've liked it. And until we meet again. Bye.